Hey, I'm Dante Morrison, and welcome to the Dante Show. <laughs> It's Wednesday. <laughs> Listen, when I say I love Wednesday, we made it. I love Wednesday because Wednesday is like the culmination. It's the Friday for the Dante show because our Monday, Tuesday be be rocking so hard that it drains us. So Wednesday, Dana, what's up? What's going on, brother? How are you doing, my friend? Oh man, I'm hanging in there, just staying low, staying out of uh staying out of the way and staying safe. Hey, so like, listen, so like about 6.55, I had a huge computer glitch. Like my computer, I don't want to say, yeah, it crashed. So, okay, so listen, this is how my Wednesday go. I go to work. I do my work all day. I get off work around 6 o'clock. I race home. I try to, you know, get a little wine down in. And then I start my church's Bible study, you know, Church One in Long Beach. Shout out to Bishop Irvin. Woo. So um, I, I open the Bible study and then I'm at church, you know, until around 745, 750. So listen, at 645, I'm trying to log into the, the show to get the church started. Nothing is happening. So the producer is texting me, where you at? What's going on? I'm like, yo, my system is not, something's not, something's not working. Then I got, then I got the co-pastor texting me, you good? I'm like, I'm trying to be good. I'm getting, my nerves is getting frazzled. I'm trying to make this happen. So then I run and I shut off everything. Like I pull the plug on the, on the modem, you know, I turn my computer off, let everything reboot. Everything reboots, comes back on. I go to log in, nothing again, nothing. So at this point, so now I'm getting calls like, where you at? I'm like, I, I can't do it. It's just not, it's just not working. So long story short, I had to get help from a computer tech to tell me how to clean my computer because I had never cleaned my computer before. I just turned it on and started working. I mean, clean it for what? You know, you clean the outside, make it pretty and shiny. <laughs> you know, I dust it off and all kind of stuff, but he was like, yo, you've never cleaned, you never cleaned your cookies, you never done that. I'm like, oh, my cookies stay clean, but he's talking about the computer. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so I, I cleaned that out and, and made that happen. And um, you know, fortunately at like about 7, 7 30, 7 35, my computer finally hit. So that was that's my testimony. You know, I was a frazzled mess from 6 45 to 7 30, because I'm like, if I don't get this computer up. You gonna be by yourself tonight, you know, talking hey. to Jamie and Breon, and you know them two savages. I would, I, would give, I would give them the show, like y'all. Yeah. You just just log out. So let's see who we got. We got Christine. Christine's here on time. She's here on time for the Dante show. Normally she get here around about eight fifteen. It's talking about what I miss the show. So right. she's here Everything. on time. We got Regina here. You know, we got we got Denise up in here. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dante Show Wednesday night. And look, if you miss Monday night, we are still relishing in the awesomeness of Jalen Jones. He dropped that science on uh, Monday. If you miss Monday night show, I beseech you to please check out Monday night show. You can go to our YouTube page, www.youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. You will see all the shows that we have done. Please check out Jalen Jones, Young, Gifted, and Black. That was his episode. And then last night, Yo, Dana, yeah. tell them about last night. Last night, man, if you guys missed last night, the young man was on here dropping knowledge. He talked about just, he just tapped into so many things for black men. Um, really black men, I think it touched more black men than it did anyone because we have to be vulnerable. We have to be able to open up. We have to be able to cry. We have to be able to be just open and just, tell things and not be scared, you know, to open up and give, touch those 
what they say, them, them inside parts that nobody get to, those secret compartments in your heart and your brain that you just, you know, put it in a box, throw the key in, and throw it away. Man, he was deep. He was deep. He, he hit it. He hit it. So let me let me do this because because my, my listen listen my frat my frat is clowning me. So remember, uh, y'all remember Joe Joe right? Remember he came to the spoken word piece. We showed the video on the show. Savage, savage about it. All right. So he hit me up because he wants to come to L.A. to film another video. He asked me if I had like a basketball court or our new a way to get to the Staples Center, and I was really racking my brain like basketball court you know i stayed by audubon right across the street they just they redid the whole court for this tournament they had last year so the courts is clean they nice but it's at a school and you know schools are closed and i don't want to hop the fence and we get arrested for trespassing don't want to do that you know so then i was like okay who do i know that works at the staples center they can get my frat brother up in there to record let me see who do i know who do i, I really start thinking like who do i know everybody knows somebody six right, degrees right, right, right. Six degrees. So today, you know, he posted, he was like, yo, never mind. I tried to, um, you know, make it happen in LA. I'm going to do it in San Diego. So me, you know, jokingly, I said, oh, man, you know, I had just reached out to the, you know, head coach of the Lakers. He's supposed to hit me back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, yo, you serious? I was like, no, nah, I'm just playing. But you know, when you get folks when they get hype, like, oh, I got my end. He's like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just BSing with you. I'm just joshing. You know, you you kind of want to crack them in the head. You want to you don't want to steal to the to the cranium. You know, so so this is my public apology to my frat brother. I'm sorry for making that joke because I know that if I would have said, yeah, I got the staple center, you'd have been up here first thing on Saturday morning filming that new joint. You know, but I know whatever you're gonna do is gonna be blazing. I got to get you on the show to really talk about spoken word, talk about because I think you know what, Dana, really. I think people don't understand how difficult it is to be a spoken word artist. You know what? I'm going to cut you off right there because not once did you reach out to me to ask me, hey, do you have a basketball court? Well, first hey. of all, first of all, you got, you got that Steelers flag, and, and that already causes kind of dissension between you and Joe because hey. every time he says hey. he that Steelers flag. Hey, that's just a flag. I would have looked out for my brother. He could have so came. You got, you got access to the Staples Center? He could have been. He could have went in my yard and did what he wanted to do with the basketball Your court. Your basketball court is this tall. No, we got, I, have, I have a regular one. No, he wanted a real court that had yeah. the lights and had the tr trust. You don't have what he need. Oh, you don't know what God has blessed. Hey, bye. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> my God, that I serve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So, you know, but back to what I was saying about spoken word. I think people downplay spoken word artists and don't really take that artistry as serious as they should. Because for me, you know, I write, I got some books out, but I don't know what I wrote verbatim. You know, so to, to for me to write down a piece that's going to last for like three minutes, three to five minutes, no breaks, no beat to drive you. It's really just you up in your, your medulla oblongata reciting what you remember. Yo, clap to every spoken word out there that really spits fire, really crack. So make sure you guys check out my frat brother, Joe McClain. He's on the thread right now. He's also an author. He owns his own publishing company. So if you like, if you like that real urban novel type stuff, Check out his books for real. Uprock Publishing. Hope I said it right. I think it is Uprock Publishing. You know he got a, he got about fifty books. He writes a book a week. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this fool lay down and wake up with a new book under his pillow like a tooth fairy dropped. Like, where are you get these books from, man? But no, he got some books and all that. And then I see my other frat brother on here, Gerard. Y'all know him as Juice. Juice. Juice was on here last month, and he dropped Juice. that project that blew our minds away. I mean, he created a project, and I will say, what, 30 days, 60 days? He wrote a whole album. Right, so, um, a whole album. What's yeah, shout out to Juice. He dropped some more music. Um, he got some other stuff in the works. This 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 bro is in the lab. So please check out Juice Music on Facebook. Check him out on Instagram. Check him out on iTunes. All that kind of stuff. Check out the album Authentication. You know, those are my frat brothers. You know, I'm proud to be a member of Kappa Lambda Chi Military Fraternity.com. Proud of it. <laughs> proud of it. You know. So yeah, man. All right, so there you go. Uprockpublications.com. If y'all want y'all a good hood read. I mean, we're talking a hood read that got language that we understand that we can relate to. 
get you one of Joe McClain's books. You will not be dissatisfied. Trust me, it is worth it. I, I read one of his books on a flight from LA to Atlanta. I couldn't put the book down. I just read it all the way through. I felt like I was over in Japan. You know, because he writes about, you know, life in the Navy. I felt like I was just there with him. So, yes, yeah, check it out, y'all. Check it out. And like I said, again, check out Juice Music, J-O-O-C-E. Get all his stuff on iTunes, all right? So listen here. I'm about to step back. This is when I disappear and my boy Dana gets his five minutes of shine on the Dante Show. It is now time for the what, Dana? The Dana Drop. Boom! What up, good people? What's going on? What's going on? I hope everybody's in good health and good spirits. Today on the Dana Drop, <laughs> we're going to talk about something really serious. And I hope this really touches, touches somebody's heart today. I hope it touches your heart. We're going to talk about the five causes of bad breath. Bad breath. <laughs> Bad breath, also called halitosis, can be embarrassing and in some cases may cause anxiety. It's no wonder that store shelves overflow with gum, mints, mouthwash, and products designed to fight bad breath. But most of you walk right past those products and say, it ain't me. It ain't my breath that's stinking. It ain't my breath that smell bad. It ain't me, okay? First cause of bad breath, general oral health. Most bad breath is caused by, caused by poor hygiene. Some of you get up in the morning, go in the bathroom, you hit the gums, you hit the teeth, you hit all of that, takes you about one minute. No, you gotta get the back of that mouth. You gotta get that tongue. You gotta get down on that nitty gritty. You gotta, ah, la, 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 la. you gotta get in there. Cause that's where the bad breath sits. I'm telling, let me tell you something. I was in the store the other day, and you know we gotta wear our mask. I'm in the store, the lady standing next to me. Man, when I tell you, she said, hello, sir. I thought somebody punched me in the face when she said, and here's the kicker. She had on a N95 mask, one of the ones that's supposed to suppress all types of stuff. My God, today, I tell you, when she said hi, whoo, I was like, Jesus, is it my time to go? That breath hit me, and I was like, my God, today. And I'm like, ma'am, ma'am, you don't smell that? You don't taste that? First of all, do you taste that? Okay? This, is, this, this has to stop. If you got on a mask, and your breath is stinking through your mask, you have a serious problem. You have a problem, okay? Another cause of bad breath. Eating flavorful food and flavorful drink. Some people say, you know what? I remember one time I went out to the club with somebody drinking all of this kind of adult beverage, beverage, just drinking, drinking. Drink. And the first thing they popped in their mouth was not a mint. They popped in a piece of fruity gum. Now your breath smell like old strawberries old cherries, old whatever. I'm just like, oh my goodness, you have to, come on, come on, please. If you don't get you a pack of Altoids, you can even get the little Altoids now and put them in your bra, you, right there, pop them right there. Just have them, okay? Another cause of bad breath, this is number three, it's coffee. Early in the morning, you go to work, and you know it's usually quiet at work, and when you get there, people want to whisper. And they got that hot coffee. I mean, one time I was at work, and this guy was trying to whisper to me because he didn't want the boss to hear. His breath smelled like gunpowder and bullet metal. I swear his breath was so bad. And matter of fact, I think he had a hint of Buick oil on it. That breath was to be damned, okay? To be damned. His breath was smelling so bad. Okay, last one. Smoking. Smoking cigarettes, breath, horrible. You might as well just go ahead and pour some warm water in the ashtray and drink it right out of the ashtray. When you want to say hi and hi, let me kiss the baby, let me kiss. No, your breath smell like cool mild or Newport Longs 
Or some of y'all breath smell like Marlboro lights. How about that one? Okay, so let's get the breath together. Let's get the breath together. You know what? Tell a friend, tell anybody. Brush your teeth, rinse out with some good Listerine, and I guarantee you, if you have fresh breath, You'll have fresh friends. You'll have people all around you that want to be around you because your breath smells good, all right? That's the Dana Drop, and I'm out! <laughs> I know you know some people like that, Dante. You, you, you work at a... Come on, man. You know... You've been wanting to have your bad breath segment for six months. <laughs> right. And for six months, I said, no, Dana, we're not talking about breath. No, no. I'm glad you have the Dana drop. <laughs> the Dana drop is your time to talk about whatever you want to talk about. And today, you took full advantage of having your moment. <laughs> full advantage. <laughs> You tall folks, they can have the Altoids in their bra. They yeah. Put it next Absolutely. to the cell phone in their wallet because everything being a bra nowadays. Right. So you, uh, I'll give you that. I think today you gave good advice. You gave good <laughs> tips. And, and folks that are wearing those masks, you now know what the rest of us have been dealing with. Right. <laughs> you know, so if nothing else, trust your mask. Because some folks got masks and they ain't washed wash their masks since the Ooh, pandemic started. My God, today. It's the same mask. It's like the, the cords of the mask are black, black. They got oil on them. Have you even rinsed your mask out? Put your mask in the sink. Put a little Dawn dishwasher liquid on it. Do this. Well, you know, and then hang it over the shower like pantyhose and let it just dry overnight. Wash your mask. Wash your mask. That's all you got to do. You know, so. I'm just saying. So what's up, Kiop? What's up, Ariel? Hey, Pam. So I'm just saying, thank you, Dana, for that empowering and enlightening conversation. People, please take note, take heed. If your breath is not where it should be, Dana gave you tips. So thank you, Dana. Everybody, give it up for Dana. And the Dana Prop. <laughs> On to a more serious note. <laughs> So if you tuned in last week, you know, last week, Town Hall Tuesday, we talked about mental health and we had two um, special ladies join the conversation, um, Jamie and Breon, and they came on. And these two are ladies work in the mental health field. They are mothers. They are passionate about their community. They are also passionate about their kids. And, and they really believe in providing tips and advice on how to strengthen the black family. Um and I think that what they have to say and how they say is so relatable oh that it's super God. duper refreshing. It's not this stale conversation. They come on and keep it 100. And I they ain't no telling what Jamie is sipping on. You know, what I, lo what I love about Jamie, if Don't you saw her. Jamie walking down the street, you would never know she was educated. You would never know she got a master's degree. You know, she got the braids. You know, she got the nails. You would never know that Jamie is about it, like on a real educated academic way. And that's why never, I love Jamie. You would never think Jamie was over 20 if you saw her. She you would not. And, ha and have a grown child. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> a grown child. And then Breon is just a beast. I've always loved Breon. I mean, I've known Breon for a wow. while. I've known Brianna for a long time, and I have watched her just evolve into this super duper therapist that she is today. Um, and just seeing her journey is just so pleasing because these are two strong black women who are really giving back and they are out there on the front lines. So, everybody, please invite your friends in, get ready for a phenomenal conversation because I love talking to people that are real that are approachable and that are tangible. Like we can really touch them. If we reach out, they're going to respond back, you know? So give it up for tonight's guests. Give it up for tonight's guests. Just start clapping now, start clapping now, start clapping now. And welcome back to the Dante Show, Breon Clements and Jamie Kirk. Hey! There they go. I know. <laughs> there they go. There they go. And look, I got some. Right. You got to go. You got to go. Be your best friend. 
<laughs> hey, Brian, Brian, I'm glad you're here today. I'm not the only light skinned one today. Thank you. Thank you for. Come on <laughs> now. Come on. One time for the light skin. That's right. <laughs> What's up, Jamie? What's going on? Look. What color we got? What color we got? We got. <laughs> got orange today. <laughs> so last week we had a really good conversation and and because it got close to nine o'clock we had to cut it off you know cut it short but the conversation started about um mental health and then i got into the subject of how do we bring our kids into the mental health conversation and make sure our kids are getting the support they need and especially right now as we go through um this pandemic where kids are home and you two both highlighted that right now kids are home and they may not be home in some safe environments, you know, because school is their safe space and they could be at home with an abusive parent, a, a predator, you know, a place where there's no food, you know, they just may not be in the best situation. Then we talked about education and how if parents are not involved in, in their kids' education, their kid may slip under the cracks. Yeah. And then when it's time to graduate, the parents is in shock when they find out their kid isn't eligible. And they're like, well, I've been telling your child for the last three years to do this, but the parent was so detached, they didn't realize their kid was not failing, but not really getting what they needed to, to excel. Right. Then we talked about Jamie and how Jamie just steps to the city <laughs> and say, yo, sis, put on a bra, put on a skirt, <laughs> you know, put on some deodorant, you know, take off that bonnet, you know, and then walk into the court and talk to the judge. You know, right. get yourself together and how you represent yourself, it matters. You know, yeah. so that conversation was important. It was necessary and it was real because we all either know somebody or got somebody or we are that somebody that are not as involved as we should be in the lives of our youth. You know, so where do y'all want to kick off tonight? Where y'all want to pick it up from? There, this so it's like, so it's so much. Well, let's talk now. I want to bring up this subject. I shared an article today that talked about um, LAPD. Y'all saw that one? That they now have to investigate about seventy five or seventy five hundred cases yes. of wrongful imprisonment because right. the cops lied and said the guys that they arrested were gang affiliated. Now, if you're not, if you don't know about that, if you get arrested and the cops keep getting affiliated on your sheet, you can right. get a harsher sentence. Yeah. Because they'll say that you're out there and you're a part of the problem. Yeah. So they the found that these police officers lied on the jackets of a lot of inmates. Now, the thing about that is the police could have arrested a lot of folks and been justified, these three cops. But any case they touched, now has to be investigated to see if there was any kind of wrongdoing. So with that being said, what goes to your mind when you think about the legal system? And Jamie, you have a son, you know, you, you have a son that's out there in these streets knowing that he can be wrongfully arrested. The cops can lie on his jacket and keep your child locked up for something that he did not do or get a harsher sentence undeserved. What goes through your mind as a black mother? You know, um, I've I've always been the one that, to overly educate my son. So you know, even just when he was younger, um, I would always have him prepare. You know, this is even when it came to wet dreams. I talked to him before he started having them. You know, you're at this age. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to teach you to wash your sheets so you're not embarrassed. So when it comes to dealing with with the police or his character per se, I teach him about being consistent. If you're consistent on the board, straight across, when your character is in question, it's easier for you to fight. If you're out, it, you know, if the first, because the first thing they're going to try to do is find the bad pictures, the, the bad right. side of you. Right. So if right. you're consistent, they have nothing to stand on. But if you give them one inkling that, you know what, he could be, or this could be, then, you know, it's it's harder for to fight justice because right. we're not we're not standing up for justice. We have to fight justice. We're always guilty. Yeah. So yeah. my thing is just teaching him to be consistent in his character. Touche. I love that. I love that. And then Bree, you got two daughters who may end up dating some of these knuckleheads. They're good kids, 
but in the eyes of the cop, they're they're black, and and they must be up to something. Are they gonna do something? How do you educate your daughters about dating? Dating while black. And let me just say to you, mamas who got sons, y'all better raise y'all sons right, because they're not coming to my front door with no craziness. Okay, so y'all better raise y'all sons right. Um, but that's vice versa. Right. Right. right? I treat that all <laughs> I treat all kids as if they're mine, really. And so if I was to have Jamie kids in my house, or if I was to have anybody's kids at my house, and before they get ready to walk out the house, I'm gonna have those real conversations with them. While you're sitting in my house, if you're playing with my daughters on the Nintendo Switch, or you're playing with them outside on my front patio, we're gonna have conversations when you guys bring up certain topics. And even when you don't, I may throw, you know how I am, I may just throw a little topic in there. Ask my kids, from time to time, I'll say to them while we're in the car, what is integrity? It's when you do the right thing when no one's watching. What is discipline? It's when did it like, and so I will sometimes throw topics in whether you're my kid or whether you're not. So I've had conversations with other kids that are not mine. I've had conversations with my daughters. This is how you act when you're around the police. I'm sad that I have to have this conversation with you, Courtney and Camille, but there is a young lady by the name of Sandra Bland, and this is what happened to her. And this is why we're having this conversation. Um, so yeah. I have those. I feel comfortable in my parenting and I've gotten to a place with my daughters to where we can have any conversation because I would much rather them learn about the world from me firsthand. I have control over the information that they're gathering than for them to get it on YouTube where they can put in my little pony and it go from my little pony to my little yeah. pony. Like, right. Right. I'd rather, yeah, I kind of run things. I run the propaganda, the propaganda that goes on in my house. Have you Bree, seen- can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah. ma'am. As, as a black woman, when dealing with the police, do you teach your kids to act in a way that you feel is going to keep them safe, or do you teach them to act in a way that you would act? So, to know me is to know that the way that I would act will probably land my kids in jail, and I don't right. teach them that. Yeah, right. I know you. Because, no, for real. Dante will tell you I'm with the rah rah. I know you, yes. And, yeah. and no, see, I, I ask you that because I have a son, and my mom always tells me, you know, how to teach him about the police. And I always tell my mom, I cannot teach my son to be Malcolm, I mean, Martin, when I'm Malcolm. You know, he, my son, he, one thing that I do know about him, he watches me. And he always tell me, Mom, I'm just like you. Mama, just like you. And I just pray, Jesus, please don't let her be just like me. <laughs> because had that been me, I would have been Sandra Bland. I would have been, because I know me. So I just tell him to whatever you decide to do, just be ready for the consequence on both ends. Because you know, I'm going to bust heads. And I'm not that parent. Oh, let's be nice. Let's be this. Oh no, we about to tear some shit up, you know. And, and so, so I will tell you something that I've, I've I've grown into, and it takes a lot of growth and it takes a lot of maturity. Um, but what I've grown in, and I live in Lancaster. I'm gonna just keep it real with you. They call it Lancaster, right? So that just goes within itself. So you know what we the climate in which I'm right. talking about. Um, I've shown my daughters how to advocate for themselves in 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 natural spaces and where they're supposed to, where it's appropriate, in spaces where it's appropriate. So my daughters know that when you're in the classroom, if the teacher is telling you something you don't agree with it, raise your hand, say, I do not agree. This is the data. This is the information. This is what I have found. Do it in a respectful way. If the teacher right. tries to come against you and you feel attacked, say, duly noted, come home, let me know about the situation, and let me do the advocating. Now, if you feel right. like your attack is up against the wall at school, the teacher is completely humiliating you, or you're in a space to where you just feel like this is too much and you're overwhelmed, say your piece, run your, uh, read them to filth, right? Because reading is fundamental. Read them to filth, and then once you're done, come home, tell me what happened, and then now watch me advocate for you. But it's going to yes. always be advocacy. It's going to always be. So when I tell my kids about like going up against the police, if you feel like that ticket was wrong, don't you hop your ass out the car. Don't you open your door. Don't fight in that no. moment. There's a space right. to fight. And that's at court. That's through trial. That's through the pen. Mm -hmm. You can. I got a little cop friend that can kind of get you. Look, the point is, don't do that in that space. Don't right. do it right in there. Right. But what you're going to do is you're going to. Save up all that energy, duly noted, take note, 
come home and then let's strategically fuck them with the pen or let's find another way around it. And so that's how I've taught my kids how to advocate. You advocate appropriately. Right. Because I know that it's, it's a lot different from women than it is oh, men. Be quiet. And, 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 and I'm sorry. To say, and one thing, and one thing I know that as a black woman, I never confess to being able to teach my son how to be a man. Um, I only try to teach him how to be a good citizen. So that was my reason why I asked you that because it, you know it's different when we're talking to our daughters as opposed to we're talking to our son. Because I can only talk to him as a way that I would talk to a, a, a man that I would I would want. Like I would want my man this way. So that's the only way that. You know, because, you know, my, my, I don't want my son nothing like my father. You know what I'm saying? He was a good man. He was a good man. But Lord, them stories, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, just hearing it come from a woman about their black women, I appreciate that. Dante? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back to you. <laughs> Let me know, because I want to respect the conversation. Right. So this was my question. This is my question. And you know, you know, we, we the village. This this is the village. And hey, LaShawn, this is a good village. And when it comes to the village mentality, you know, are you open to the village mentality? Or do you have the I'm raising my own kids? I got this mindset. And, and Everybody. Part, have you ever have you ever had to combat a parent? That you was trying to let them know there's a better way to do this, and they kind of clap back on you. Did you want to go, or do you want me to go? It's up to you. you. Go, you first. go first. Wake it up. Oh, you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I don't. I don't mind the village. I always tell people because uh, my my son is very respectful, and I am blessed in that sense. He's 19. Yeah. He's never yeah, been yeah. in any kind of trouble with the law. I don't have a problem with drinking drugs, like. My thing is, okay, he played too much video games. He spent his money on video games. But, hey, it's his money, not mine. Um, but I don't know. I just, I don't know, Dante. Um, you know how I am with my kid. You know how I am. And then, then, then dealing with him, is that's my heart. So I'm honest with him. I tell him everything. But do you do know. you allow others to come in and and raise him? As long as long as as long as I know it's coming from the heart, and I know that okay. they have his best interest in heart, because I don't profess to know everything. I know sometimes mm -hmm. I am wrong, and something I'm not too big of a, to apologize to him when I am wrong. So if mm -hmm. I would rather someone that I know love him discipline him than somebody that doesn't love him to attack him. Love that, Bree. And so for me, I would have to say um, that while the village mentality worked back in the day, um, so for my mom and her mom and some for my grandma and so on and so on, the village mentality doesn't work so well right now. Um, while I would love for that to be the case, um, I just don't trust everyone's intentions. And so I thought it was really awesome how Jamie was like, yes, of course I would do the village thing. If your intentions on disciplining my child was within good means. Um, I just don't trust people nowadays. We got so many pedophiles. We got so many um, molesters. We got so, it'd be Uncle Ray Ray downstairs in the basement. Like it, and we don't want to talk about that, right? Cause don't nobody ever want to talk about that. But it's, it's so many different people that don't have good intentions for your child that sometimes I do have to check another person about how they come at my kid. I, I do, and I will. Um, while, and, and, and it could be a family member. So when it comes to that village mentality, depending on your track record and how I'm watching how you parent, perhaps you don't need to tell my child what to do. Or if I'm looking at your track record and you're a part of the village and you're doing what you're supposed to do and it's been effective and you helped raise me and it makes some sense, by all means, like correct my child when they're, but again, I don't have my kid around people who I don't feel are adequate enough to discipline them. Like I tell you, I could, I could leave the girls at your house and be like, all right, now if they act up, you already know what to do. <laughs> I'm right. out. Right. I just don't trust that everyone um, because everyone's intentions are not good. And when you discipline my kid, are you disciplining them out of teaching them a lesson or is it because you're frustrated and angry? And so, so I let have me, to let me, exactly. let me say this because you said something that I thought that I, thought was very key. You said now there are, you know, pedophiles, molesters, yada, yada, yada. 
They've always been there. True. You know, they've always been there. Um, I think the difference is that now we have found the courage and the strength to call it out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I think every generation has had their, you know, season of, you know, wrongdoings towards children, inappropriate touching and, and all that, you know, even abuse, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to now in this certain dispensation in time, I think that we still have the same amount we've always had, but we have become more vocal about not accepting it. You know, I think now we're in a season where we're, we're not going to tolerate that anymore. We're now starting to listen to kids more. You know, the minute I think the minute now if a child says somebody has touched me, we're going to listen and we're going to really be like, who? Point them out. Let mm-hmm. me know. Are they in the family? We don't right, see let's get the world that we used to for the sake of appearances. You know, so I think that I, I like what you said about now there is a lot more, but I think it's not now there's a lot more. There always it's has always been. been there. I, now we're just more empowered to address it. And I like but have you saying. noticed like back then, have you noticed that like back then though, like your neighbor could whoop you and your mama was cool with it. Now, if your neighbor whoop you, it's the DCFS case. Do you get what right. I'm saying? Like back right. then the village mentality, it worked. Like it was, it, it was I so because that but now I think because people overstep the there's a fine line between discipline and abuse, mm-hmm. and, and people mm-hmm. overstep that because mm-hmm. when you whoop when you're angry, then it becomes abuse when the child is trying to actually protect themselves, it starts to look mm-hmm. like they're fighting back. So, remember right. what would happen when you try to fight back? Oh, you're getting it more, they want you to stand there and take it, right. you know, just stand there and take it. So and it's like I'm, def- I'm a mind. defenseless child, and you're hitting me with a hot wheels track. You know, mm-hmm. my natural response is to block and say, "Ouch, stop!" No one stands right. there except for a slave getting beat by master. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like I'm and not saying that. I like how they Tasha they said the village has to be vetted. You know, it has to be vetted. We have to start vetting the village. You know, and 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 I, I'm a big I'm a big advocate of if a kid is not comfortable, I listen. If a kid is like, I don't want to sit on their lap, you know, I don't want to give on nobody lap, not even Santa Claus. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go give Auntie a kiss if it's a little boy because Auntie can be a pedophile too. Auntie can yeah. be yeah. And we don't you talk know, about that. We don't talk about how we gotta watch our son around women. We don't. Go ahead, Jamie. Go take it. Go there. You know, you, you get that, oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's so handsome. Oh, look at him. Oh, look at him. Oh, wait, back up, lady, because I cut. Right. <laughs> look at that little man. Ooh, but, that little man. Know, look at his little But suit. then if you, if you listen to <laughs> grown men when they talk about losing their virginity, they're 10, 12, 13 with 16, 17, 18-year-old women, and people glorify it. You're like, you're seen as the man because an older woman Took your virginity, but it was just right. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't talk about that. And Jamie, let's back up, back to Carp a little bit, because I love how you opened the door to female predators. Yes, we don't talk about female predators. We don't yes. talk we about let every boys. woman change your son's diaper. We don't mm-hmm. talk about that. How little boys have had their innocence stripped, yes. and and have been brainwashed to believe that that's a rite of passage. But yes. this child who is too like it's young, the right thing to do. You're a man because you got an older woman. Yeah, Look he's how- now traumatized. He's traumatized, and we we laugh at that. You know, that, that's not that's not a joke. But we don't talk about the women who prey upon these younger men. They get the the label of cougar. They get the label of this and label of that. We don't talk about it. We we don't shame them, but we shame the 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 dirty old man looking at the little girls. Oh, you just and I saw it. something. Oh, I'm sorry, Dante, for cutting you off, but what? I saw something on Facebook that was like that, where they kind of talked about Jada Pinkett, and they were like, she's much older than August, and she knew that mentally he wasn't in the right space. Now, if a man did that with a woman, it would be, oh, he took that young girl knowing she wasn't, you know, she was mentally unstable. Da-da. But when a woman does it to a guy, it's old oh, Jada. She a cougar, but she was getting her groove back, Stella, and it's glorified when it's the other way around. So no, you're right. right. You're right about that. And I think it was uh, Bree. Well, both of you guys mentioned something regarding the village. The reason why the village doesn't work these days is because most of the parents these days are kids themselves. 
So therefore, they're not even adult enough or grown enough or mature enough to understand what it means to be a true parent because they're children themselves. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the village is not going to work if you have a village of kids. Mm -hmm. Who's raising who? Who's mm -hmm. going to work who? But I think, it's also, I think it's also not age, it's mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I know I know a lot of older women who are terrible parents. And I know a lot of young girls who are phenomenal mothers. Right. I don't really think it's the age. I think it's, it's where, where they end up here. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's what I think. What you think, Bree? I think, I think it has a lot to do with maturity. Um, because as a parent, you learn along the way. But typically when you're a parent, you're parenting from either one or two places, from love or resentment. Right. And so when you're parenting from either love or resentment, it shows up. Your kids can feel that it, they either become anxious or avoidant. And that's the attachment style. We're not even going to go into Bowlby because I don't got time to cycle educate. But when we talk about <laughs> attachment styles, you either have, like I said, um, anxious or avoidant people. And and when you find out that those attachments are like that, it usually has something to do with your primary caregiver. How did you attach to that person? Because most of the time, the grandparent is raising the mother or son and the kid. And so, then look at the son. He's so attached to the grandma. Yeah, so they're growing up together. So mm -hmm. it's like, how can you, like you said, you can't go back into the past because that village was that village. It was like, yo, like somebody said on our show um, a couple of weeks ago, that boy got uh, in trouble in school and he got whooped all the way till he got home. Yep. What was it, uh, was it Carl Dante, whose mother is the minister in your um in your clergy and your uh, she's in your um, denomination of your church? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm talking about yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He said he got in trouble in school and he got whooped at every neighbor whooped him until he right. got and still got a whoop. Right. right. Now, so now that's, that's the DCFS case today. And today, oh, that's. For sure, foster care. Everybody got everybody going to jail. <laughs> right. Everybody going to jail. Everybody yeah. going to jail. What? That's child abuse. And then the right. mama going to jail for child neglect. Done. Right. Everybody right. in jail. And My it, mother it, used it, to just, um, shared, you can't always blame your parents. It takes adults to do adult things. You know, I do think that a lot of times the we um we point the finger in the wrong direction. You know, sometimes and there's a lack of accountability. You know, some things I did wrong that had nothing to do with my parents, uh, my upbringing. It was it was me being an adult and wanting to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was disciplined growing up. I went through those seasons. I was a mouthy kid, believe it or not. You know, and I believe it. Uh, I have my phases, but but some stuff when I got older, I couldn't blame was because my mama didn't or my daddy didn't. Nah, this is all me. This is all me. I love what Thais just said. Kids nowadays have weaponized calling 911. Mm -hmm. They weaponized yeah. it. Yeah. If you're telling me, I'm calling 911. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you. I'm calling 911. Everything right. Let me tell you. My mama used to be like, my mom used to say to me all the time, call 911. Oh, yeah. I'll give you the phone. I'll give you the phone. phone. Say, my mother would give us the phone and say, here. I'll beat their ass too. Let yeah. them know. Right. <laughs> I like your mama. I like your mama. Well, I, I think that is true. I think that that I don't want to say because it's a it's a thin line. I don't know where Jamie went. She, that line took over. But it's a thin line between <laughs> what Jamie said between discipline and abuse. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's all about where is it coming from? Where is it right. coming from? Are you whooping this kid? And, and it has to be very age appropriate. Let's talk about right. that. Because you can't be whooping a two year old hard um, in the chest, sock him in the chest for peeing on himself. He too. Come on. Right. Right. I'm right. potty training him. I'm potty just the way I potty train. I sock him in the chest if he pee on himself. Well, he's two. That's not fair. Right. But right. now you have. Have a two-year-old and maybe they're they're pulling something and you keep telling them no, don't pull that, it's gonna hurt you. And you tap their hand, that's not child abuse, that's discipline. Um it, it needs to be age appropriate. And, and and you know when you've taken it too far as a parent, come on, you know when you've taken it too far. You should know. You should know. But if you were raised, if you were raised to believe that that kind of abuse was necessary to raise a child, you don't know. You don't know when to stop because you're like, well, my mom beat me till I passed out. So let me beat you till you pass out. It's, it's, it's passed down. So that doesn't make it healthy because it's, you know, behavior. it's wrong. 
Some kids need the right hand of fellowship, though. They, they don't need do. to get oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some kids. I don't think a kid, honestly, I don't think a kid needs to be physically touched or abused because a kid is defenseless. If, if a kid cannot fight you back, it's uneven. And you are now the power figure in this situation. So you know, you for me, there has to be a way that we can have a conversation about this, something, but beating a kid to they to so they have a conversation with a child that's not responsive to your conversation. Oh, there's levels to this, honey. Therapy. You got to you got to know that talking just ain't go see that's fake and say that. Let me tell you a therapist. I just can't I just can't see myself because I have two two god kids. I can't see myself grabbing a belt, chasing them through the house or down the street, trying to beat them. It, what? Because but, they haven't thrown your phone in the toilet. They haven't uh they haven't broke your uh seven. I'm the adult playing, I'm the adult. playing I'm football. The adult. Or playing whatever in your front room after you done told them seven times. Well, well, you're not, I'm the Dana, adult. You're not, Dana, you're not giving good examples. They haven't jumped in your face like they bought the swing on you. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, now listen, listen. Now, if my guy son square up. Right, right. Oh, you're a You know. Oh, you're not going to therapy no more? Yeah. You want to right. you're not going to therapy right. Right. What I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is just because you're having a bad day, like Jamie said, and the kid comes ask you a question and you like get the F out of my face. You see, I'm having a bad day and you just start beating on the kid. That's abuse. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's abuse. So, I, I, you know, I get what y'all are all saying. I get what y'all are saying, but I'm not one that's going <laughs> to just going to just start squaring off on a kid. Because they talking to me and I'm not in the mood, you know. Are are they spilt? They spilt milk on the table, and I told you don't ever knock the glass over. It was an accident. Well, that's you know, a, in any situation, though, any relationship, even if it's spouse of you. If you having a bad day and you just go home and smack your husband or smack, it's the same thing. So that that's right. that that's that's understandable. But like Jamie said, right? If Jamie's five four and her son is six eight, and he jumping up like, yo, what's good? Jamie, go cut the hell out of him. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tap on what Jared just said real quick. Uh, Jared, Jared, is this your first time watching the Dante show? Jared said, but therapists aren't bad. That's a misconception. Our community, the thing is, our community makes it hard to talk to one another. Jared, if you have ever watched the Dante show, you will know that I am pro therapy. I had a therapist on the show last night. Right. I had a therapist last week. At least once a week on this show, we have a conversation about therapy, mental health. Yep. So if this is your first time, please keep watching because I am big on mental health. I am big on getting on that therapist's couch. I am big on telling a professional about your problems. Yes, I believe in taking it to the Lord, but I also believe in taking it to Dr. Such and Such. I believe in that. So we are right. real big on this. And a lot of folks on my um, thread that are watching are actually licensed therapists. You know, they believe in therapy as well. I want to talk about something real quick. You two are single parents, correct? Sing single parents. So when it comes to when it comes to single parenting, you know, what do you think about parents that weaponize the other with the child? Well, um, are they telling truths? I think I don't know. I don't know if the kid if the kid asks, "Hey, I would like to meet my father. I want to meet my dad." You know. Oh, I want then to yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Now, if the mother, bye, you know, bye, 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 bye. dad is no good, dude, she may tell the kid, "No, nah, you don't need to see him. He ain't about nothing." So, what do you get? Tell those here's the thing. Just because he's a sucky boyfriend doesn't mean he's a sucky dad. Um. My, look, my mom and my stepmom have been at odds for years. My dad has been gone for over 30 years, and they just squashed their beef this year. You know what I'm saying? And it was, they both realized that he was a shitty boyfriend, but he was a good father. And you have to separate the two because while you think you 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 punishing him, you really hurting the kid and you're teaching the kid really not to value themselves 
the, the uh, uh, any any male figure and you. And I like what Thais just said. Thais said a lot of parents are attacking the absent parent through the child, especially if the child looks like the absent parent. Our okay. please don't have no traits of their daddy. Oh my God, you just like your daddy, and I hate your daddy. But I'm I'm not my daddy. So oh, Rihanna, oh trigger, we hit it. We hit it. We yeah. hit that. I'm, I'm ready. Tag me in, coach. I'm ready. I'm ready. Go ahead, Bree. Go ahead. So um, boom. So that's my narrative. My narrative is that um, my daughters, both of them, they look like their father. Exactly um, like their father. It's just like their daddy. Um, and they act like him at times too. Um, but I always remember that there was at one point in time in my life where I absolutely love this man. So it ain't all bad, right? And so um, you get to a place of maturity where you realize that the other person who is absent will weaponize themselves. I don't even have to speak anymore. There will be times where he will promise to pick them up. He does not. I'm left to have to take them to Disneyland to make it all better. So if we're going to talk about that, like, let's talk about how you have parents like me. You have to overcompensate for the action of that other parent. Um, I'm here in a playback. Oh, okay. Oh, we, do. we got it. We okay. Got it. We got a producer backstage working all this. You just keep talking. Come on. Come on. <laughs> um, so... Yes, my daughters, they do look like their father. Um, me and him, we were married for five years and it was great. It was a great run. Um, but in the end, we divorced. It didn't work out. Do I hate him? No, I don't. Um, do I wish he was more involved in our kid's life? Absolutely. Um, am I going to force him to be a father? I can't. My hands are tied, right? I can't. I can't make anybody do something that they don't want to do. Um, do I weaponize my do I weaponize him to my kids? Absolutely not. When they ask me things like, how come dad didn't pick us up? I don't know. Call him. Let him explain to you. He needs to explain to you why he was not able to pick you up. Well, mom, why does dad still live in a garage with no real house or no real like space for me to have a, a, a bed to sleep on? Mom, why are we still sleeping on the air mattress? I don't know. Perhaps you should go I ask I hope him. he's not watching my show. I don't care if he is. That's a Come on, you know me. I don't care. Look, but my, these are, and this is what I mean by truths. When I hear people say things like, are you weaponizing them? No, these are my truths. <laughs> these are my truths. <laughs> so when I hear people say things like, well, don't weaponize him like that or don't say these things, I don't have to say anything. My daughters know when they go to his house and there's an air mattress there every time, I don't have to say, oh, I don't have to say a word. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the shoulder. Look at the shoulder. Because I know, I know the fathers of both their children, and I'm sitting here like, "Yo, those is my homies." <laughs> JB, go ahead. Have you ever oh, been in a position? Where you... Yeah. Oh, Jamie can't hear. Okay, good. That means she can't. She can't sabotage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so let's, let's, get, let's get to this last question because we, we got like three minutes left. So both of you work in the you know the mental health Having field, value you know, that kind of stuff. And as we talk about, as we talk about, well, you you struck a nerve, Bree, because that right there just I mean you opened that door. You know, I mean, there's a whole lot of comments in the chat because I can't. You know, I, I, I found a story around that because that was you know it, it wasn't a speed bump. It was a wall. We have to stop the car and get out and look. So, so when it, when it comes to it, what would you love to see happen in the community as it relates to the village? What would you both love to see? Your closing comment. More support around nonprofits and some of the work and the outreach that they're doing in the community with some of the programs that they're trying to implement, especially around mental health. Um, because right now what I'm seeing is that there are so many battles that the past generations have fought that, that they haven't quite won that the youth are still having to fight. So if we can kind of like get to the youth and, and provide them with like preventative programs, mental health programs, um, it's, it's always better to do prevention versus rehabilitation. So in order to combat that preschool to prison pipeline, my biggest thing that I would leave with everybody who's listening to this is like, if you can just support a nonprofit, um, I have one. And it don't even have to be mom. It could be any nonprofit that is working with mental health, education, and kids. Um, I think that is going to be the fuel. That's what's going to get the kids um, basically to where they need to be. Love it. Jamie? Can Jamie hear us? 
I'm having problems with my audio. I only can hear some some of y'all. Oh, okay, all right. We're trying to get your closing comments, Jamie. I mean, how you want the village? We'll we'll get we'll get Jamie back on. Hey, so listen, let me tell you about Jamie real quick because she can't hear. But once the Dante show, we're able to get back in the same space. We're gonna have Jamie on. Jamie is the owner operator of Lush Bartending Services. Lush Bartending Services basically comes to your home. It's a mobile bartending company. Weddings. Funerals, bar mitzvahs, it doesn't matter. Lush Bartending Services will come out and cater your event. So you may have your food caterer there, your dessert caterer there, but you also need Lush Bartending there to bring all the drinks. She makes these alcoholic pouches like Capri Sun that are phenomenal. So if you ever need anything catered, please reach out to Lush Bartending Services. Jamie will be there to take, she is on the air. <laughs> So, yes, sure. Jamie is in California, um, Lush Bartending Services. And then, Bray, let folks know how they can reach out to you. my volume keeps going in and out. Um, I, they can reach me at my nonprofit's um, web address, which is our website, which is itstimeinc.org. Um, the name of my nonprofit is Together Impacting Minority Excellence. And so that's the acronym for time. Um, I'm having a backpack giveaway on August the 15th at Compton College. From one to four o'clock, we'll be giving away backpacks. And we're also, I got new news. One of my sponsors is um, sponsoring a laptop. So I'll be giving away a laptop um, to the students who write the best essay as to how did the pandemic affect them. Um, so I'll be giving away a laptop. Um, you can also reach me on Instagram, at Brie Therapy. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys at the backpack giveaway. It's free backpacks. Come on, y'all. Go get them. I can love hear you right now. You. So Bree, I'm gonna contact you because I have a actually have a box full of backpacks. So Bring them. Jamie Toy Butler said, What's up? I don't I know if Jamie can hear you. Toy, Jamie's phone is going in and out. She needs she got Boost Mobile or something. She needs yeah, that Obama phone. phone. Right. So no, I I and bring I that on Wednesday <laughs> night. And you got all this background noise going on behind her and all this momentum and energy. Yep, okay, so here, thank y'all for being a part of the Dante show Wednesday night. Great conversation. We go should we do a fundraiser to get an actual bed so the air mattress can be thrown out? I mean, what should we do? I mean, you know? go fund me, cash I mean. out, PayPal, Apple Pay, what we need. I heard because cash out, cash out. That's your homeboy. That's your homeboy. Until you're doing it, who's going to cash out? Cash out my whole village. Cash out my whole village. Cash out my whole village. Cash out my whole Contribute to my phone. J Kirk 82. Honestly, <laughs> 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 my internet, my laptop didn't stop. Everything going in and out. Get the video. Dana, closing comments. Let's hit hey, this. what's up, everybody? Hey. Thank you all for tuning in. You know how I do it. We got to spread love. And a spreading lies. We got to spread love. It's not spreading lies. Hey, it sounded like you had on some old tidy whities when you did that. Right that, was my, that was my Karen Clark. Ah! Go ahead. Hey, man. All right, reach out to somebody right now. You know the pandemic is real. Suicide is real. Depression is real. Just reach out to somebody and let them know you love them. You're thinking about them. Reach out to us. Again, thank you so, so, so much. We really appreciate you all, all tuning in to our shows. Tell a friend. Tune in. All right? We love y'all. Appreciate it, y'all. And as you know, I got to do my commercial real quick. I got like 30 seconds to knock this out, and it's going to be really, really, really fast. Watch me do this. So I am more than just the host of The Dante Show. I am also an author. I have two books out. The first book is called The End of the Rainbow. If you want to learn more about me, my life, my experience, my journey through my 20s, you know, being a young black gay man in California, get The End of the Rainbow and read all about the Chronicles. Go to the second book, Yesterday Clarified is the sequel to the first book. It puts everything into a nice little pretty bow. And you get to see some of the stuff that I went through in my 20s, early 30s, and how I am now at 48, thriving and surviving. Praise God. Glory be to Jesus. All right. Go to my website. 
or Amazon.com to purchase the books. You can go to Amazon.com or www.dantemorrison.com. Visit my website. You'll learn that I'm more than just a podcast, blogger, host, and all that kind of stuff. I'm an HIV activist. I have been featured in all kinds of magazines. I've been on the news. I even spoke at George Floyd's memorial, believe it or not. I don't have the footage, but I did do it, all right? So please check me out. Love you, mean it. I truly appreciate the support. Follow us on YouTube, yeah. www.youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. YouTube.com backslash Dante Morrison. It costs you nothing to subscribe. Click the button and subscribe. Good night, Pam. Love you. I really would appreciate your support and your help. Also, the Dante Show t-shirts are in. Supplies are limited. If you would like a Dante Show t-shirt where Black Lives Matter, hit up my inbox. Hit up my inbox. Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, whatever the case may be, and I'll put it out in the mail. Inbox me, and I will get your size, get your address, and we will make that happen. All right? For those that hate, I don't care. It's a beautiful jacket. The sun was shining, and God was shining down on me. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. So for all the haters, we love you anyway. So make sure to check us out every every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live or YouTube or Periscope. Share with your friends. Check out past episodes. Please go back and watch Monday Night Show. Jalen Jones was phenomenal. Check out last night. David Hernandez gave us just a mental health breakdown. His voice Ooh. was amazing, And we all felt healed afterwards. Kudos to Kwame Corbett and Pyro Media Network for making the Dante show do what it do. He does all the visuals, all the music, all the transitions. He is backstage now watching this, and we love it. If you'd like to have your own show, you can have one. Go to pyromedianetwork.com and click on free consultation. He will help you build your show. If you want to be a guest on The Dante Show, go to pyromedianetwork.com, click podcast, see The Dante Show, and add yourself to the calendar. All right? So we're done this week. We will see y'all next Monday night for another phenomenal three days with Dante and Dana Day. All right, everybody. Be blessed. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Brush your teeth, fresh breath, it matters. Thank y'all, we love you. Peace out.